Anything you No boy, that's why. Hello everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, since you probably joined me since I was talking about Love is Blind, it is usually when I talk about movies. Oh my God, I forgot my own intro. Okay, Bat Movies and the Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bat movies while putting my makeup on. Oh my God, it's been two weeks, Jesus. Well, in fairness, I am a bit jet lagged. I'm just getting back from LA. I was there doing some work. I was there having some fun, visiting a friend. Uh, went to Disney. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a tan and it's uniform. <laughs> oh, I was also on the Sad Boys podcast and it was a lot of fun, Jarvis Johnson and Jordan Adi Edica. Adika, I've never said that out loud. If you heard Gabrielle Union's in a movie and it's called Neo Ned, what would you ask yourself? She plays one? Close. But 2005. She, she's in love with one. There you go. No! She falls in love with a neo Nazi at a psych ward. At a psych ward? <laughs> Does he also believe he's having sex with Hitler? No, oh. that's a missed opportunity. Remember the Harlem Shake. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Back in my day, we were doing the Crip Walk. I remember. Oh, on the fields during harvest when it was musically. <laughs> uh, hey, come on now. That'll be linked down below. It was very, very fun. And I'm back to bestow upon you a shitty movie that I found on the internet. Oh, before we get started, I do have a little bit of an announcement that my Wish Trend set is back. For those of you that don't know and always wonder what my skincare is, I work with Wish Trend pretty semi-regularly to get you guys deals on stuff that I use. This time we're focusing on sun care as well as like cooling the skin down. If you would like to check that out, that's 45% off. It'll be linked down below and get that while uh, it's on sale because it's 45% off. I will also be using those to prep my skin today if you are curious. And of course, last but not least, we have bills to pay. So I'm gonna send it over to Admiral Kinney. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Admiral Kinney and today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I've actually been a customer of BetterHelp for a few years now. We're going on maybe three by the end of this year. I decided to go with BetterHelp because I wanted to go with traditional therapy and they couldn't see me for four months. And I'm like, hey babe, I'm going through it. I can't, I can't wait for that. But with BetterHelp, I was able to get a therapist very quickly and I've been working with the same therapist for a while. And it was just so great to have um, someone kind of follow me on my mental health journey and help guide me and, and help me reflect and help me not fall down the same like negative thought patterns that I have a tendency to do. The therapy is very personalized. You can go on there and say what attributes of a therapist you prefer. I wanted a black woman therapist and that's what I got and we work out very well. But if you end up with a therapist that doesn't really match your vibe or for whatever reason, you're just not working well together, then you can switch your therapist no cost to you. You can do weekly sessions, video calls, send a message to them at any time or do message therapy sessions. Personally, I like a phone call. Sometimes you just be going through it and then you have this realization like before I crumble, Let's talk to my therapist first. Um, if you've been considering therapy, maybe give BetterHelp a try, especially if you find that it's hard to get an in-person therapist in your area, whether it be wait list or just your area doesn't offer them. They also have payment assistance options. So if you need to look into that, that's there as well. So if you would like to check out BetterHelp, you can click on my link down below and get 10% off of your first month of therapy. Big thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. So last time we talked about a movie, it feels like forever ago, it's only been two weeks, but it's because I've been talking about Love is Blind, it tends to take up a lot of my mental space. By the way, did y'all know, I hear, I don't know how true this is, I haven't fact checked it, but did y'all know that they fired the Lachey's? Doesn't surprise me, but yeah, and they were talking about how they're gonna bring Cameron and, oh, the, 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 the marriage that people like from the first season, I can't think, I'll be, Excited to see next season. But yeah, because we were talking about Love is Blind for so long, I nearly forgot that the last time we were on Bad Movies in a Beat or Good Movies in a Glam when we liked the movie, we talked about Pearl, which, ugh, love Pearl. X sequel, I'm still waiting on bated breath for Maxine to come out. So until then, so until then, I'll have to be satisfied with that amazing performance. Oh, woe is me. Uh, but if you wanna check out that video, you can check it out up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. Today's video was not planned. It was not on the docket. I had every intention of talking about the new Ari Aster movie, Bo is Afraid. But the problem is I didn't bank on it being a three hour indiscernible cluster 
a seemingly endless onslaught of just happenings, just who's a what's it's, <laughs> just being attacked for three hours with no apparent plot other than following one man's visceral voyage through his own anxiety. Again, it's three hours. There's so much going on. I couldn't make a video on it if I tried because also I don't know what I watched. There's another Cole recommendation. Maybe it's one of those movies I have to see several times to find appreciation for, but it, I don't think I can do that. With that said, it was not boring. It was not boring. I can give it that. But because I can't make a video on that movie or I don't plan to anytime soon, maybe if I just really wanna put myself to an incredible task one day in the future, we can do that. So I was kind of stuck here like, oh, then what do I watch this week? And whenever I feel like I have no direction, I think of two places I can always be satisfied. Um, and that is Tubi and or Passion Flicks. And today, I'm doing the latter. I haven't checked out Passion Flicks in a little bit. So I was just curious what's on there that I have yet to assault my senses with. There's something very prodigal son about it. When I ventured onto Passion Flicks, I discovered uh, a movie that I at no point expected to come out of the, the Tosca Musk romance movie mill. That is, as far as I know, Passion Flicks first foray into black romance with the film adaptation of a novel called A Brother's Honor. A Brother's Honor from New York Times bestselling author Brenda Jackson. The Granger brothers return to Virginia to save their family business. The eldest brother, Jace, hires Shayna Bradford to untangle the mismanagement of the company. She's the right person for the job and the right woman to turn Jace's world upside down. Together, they discover a conspiracy possibly connected to his father's wrongful imprisonment. That's a very high rating for this shit movie. Oh my God. So as you can imagine, uh, nothing could deter me from the concept of black romance on passion flicks. But unfortunately this movie is bad in a way that I'm kind of disappointed about, if that makes sense. Um, it's an hour and 45 minutes of tedium. Despite it being a romance, it's shockingly uh, all over the place. And the romance is kind of shoehorned in because they knew that we would just kind of fade out without it. And I fade out with it as well, which is interesting because there's so many plot points, many of which are introduced and never closed. My theory is that it was supposed to be several movies like it's it was supposed to be a series but as far as I'm aware they didn't continue it probably because this movie sucked but there's a lot of stuff going on and I'm still so bored there's clearing their father's name of murder there's taking over this business there's espionage there's romance somehow it was boring as f I don't know how they did that but I think the thing uh maybe even more so than most passion flicks movies that I find quite deterring from this film is that it's 98% expository dialogue and it's done so poorly. <laughs> Not even fun to watch alone. I think it would be funny to watch with other people though. So if you just want to bring your friends together to watch some garbage, I highly recommend that. But me just in my bedroom trying to watch it, I uh, got so bored and so easily distracted. And with the movie having so much going on and nothing at all, it actually makes it incredibly hard to follow. And it doesn't help that my dog is also in her teenage phase, so she refuses to let me watch anything in peace. Uh, I, I don't think it matters anyway. The movie's a mess. <laughs> you combine too much going on, yet not enough. And then you combine it with the most passion flixian editing and acting style. But everything's written and performed as if no one on set or behind the scenes, anyone that participated at all had ever met another human being, very lizard people type energy. And I hated it. <laughs> Short and sweet, not to be too passionate about it. Quite frankly, it was so stupid. I almost don't wanna make a video on it, but took too long to make today's video. So here we are. I'm gonna bestow this upon you. So without further ado, this is A Brother's Honor. 2019. Now, I think it's fair to say that as a black person going into a romance movie that's supposed to be on passion flicks, I was a little primed to be uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> I was curious to what degree uh, race plays or doesn't play a particular large uh, role in the film and ultimately how well they uh, deal with that. Um, for the most part, the movie just doesn't. In many ways, all of the same kind of, you know, tropes that you expect from from 
romance novels like this, you know, the bad boys who are inexplicably rich, dark tortured past, but not too much that it elicits actual trauma, but just enough to make them sexy. I will admit that when it opened and the first thing we see is uh, their father going to jail, that was a little jarring, but uh, no opening sequence, by the way, no title screen, no lead in. Uh, it just starts with their father going to jail. I was a little like, oh God, what is this? But it's basically every other Passion Flicks movie ever made just with black people. It's all the bad acting and lack of chemistry that you've come to expect. So rest assured, none of that will be lacking in this experience, okay? This is darker than I thought it was. Maybe I don't have as much of a tan as I thought I did. We see the... We see the three Granger boys in the courtroom as their father is sentenced to prison for killing their mother. That was 15 years ago, and now all of the boys have grown up to be incredibly successful men in their own right. The eldest, Jace, is like a lawyer of some sort, some business professional out in California. The middle child, Caden, is a successful saxophone player out in Vegas, if I'm not mistaken. And the youngest, Dalton, is a secret billionaire that they didn't know had uh, that much money until this movie begins. So that's crazy. How did, how did that happen? Again, it's pretty obvious pretty quickly that this movie was supposed to be one of several. It was supposed to be within a series. But again, as far as I'm aware, they never did that. So this movie introduces 8 billion plot points that they will never resolve. And one of the issues with trying to make a video like this is like, God forbid they do ever resolve it because who knows what power these bad movies end up being hold. I would hate to have skipped some major plot point before we can return to it if they decide to make another shitty movie. And I want to uh, talk about it. It's more confusing to talk about every single plot point. I'm going to be skipping major chunks of this movie because you just don't need to know it. And even the ones that I'll tell you possibly won't even be important. God forbid they make another movie. So with that said, I'm going to skip the comedically antagonistic relationship between Caden and his bandmate slash ex-lover. But I don't want to because I want to talk about this clip. This clip is fucking hilarious. <laughs> and I'll never be able to do anything with it because we never finished the story arc in this movie. They egged that woman on. She was practically stripping for you. Is that why you were off key? <laughs> I mean, you obviously like women who are off beat. Might as well like them that are tone deaf as well. But tragedy strikes and the brother's grandfather ends up suffering from a serious heart attack and is hospitalized, which ends up being kind of a catalyst bringing all of the boys back to Virginia. But of the brothers, the youngest, Dalton, actually has a bit more of a complicated relationship with the grandfather back when he was younger. He was a bit wild and loose when their mother was murdered and their father went to jail. So much so that the grandfather decided that he shouldn't be able to have access to his um, inheritance and instead was told that he will have to figure things out on his own. So Dalton has quite a bit of resentment towards their grandfather. Am I not surprised to find you two goofing off? Dalton. Oh yeah, it's me. Holy shit. <laughs> what? He's right there, my guy. How did you miss him? Dalton also has a complicated relationship with the brothers as well because after their father went to jail, he never visited him in prison, which led the other brothers to believe that Dalton thought that their father was guilty, a belief that the other two brothers don't hold. Instead, he says that the reason why he couldn't go is because it was so hard seeing their father in that context. A man who was so law abiding that he would never get a parking ticket. He was the most, you know, upright guy ever. <laughs> Soon the grandfather wakes up and he only has enough energy to give them his dying wish. There's a lot of them and I feel like he's asking for too much, but he's like, I'm gonna need y'all to save our family business called Granger Aeronautics that is apparently going under and they didn't even know it was going under. And also uh, prove your father is innocent of murder and get him out of jail. Just casual, not asking for too much. And then he dies, which I think is very rude. Some of us can't take an everlasting vacation, my guy. You can't do that. Shell off all your work to other people and had a nerve to die. Son of a bitch, son of a bitch. 
I can't find nothing I'm looking for. At the funeral, Caden sees his childhood best friend, a girl who works at their family company. They have a tumultuous history because apparently she stopped talking to him after uh, their father went to prison. But considering that was when they were children, I don't know why they're still animos. I mean, she works at your family's business. I don't know why I'm asking as if anyone has ever thought of the logistics of any story being told on Passion Flicks, but whatever. They're in a very bad space right now. He's actually uh, very furious at her. Um, I'm probably gonna skip the scene when it comes up, but basically he tells her that he uh, can't stand the sight of her and blah, blah, blah. So they're not good, okay. Um, the only reason I bring her up is because a, if they ever get around to a second movie, I feel like she's gonna be somewhat important, which I doubt they will, it's been years. But also she has a little bit of significance in a future scene, so. But now that grandfather is dead, the company is now supposedly going to be owned to the shareholders and they are looking to put a man at the company named Freeman as the head of the company. But being that that is against grandfather's wishes, the Dalton boys are interested in taking over the company themselves. But though it's the wish of their grandfather, it's not really in alignment with the shareholders. They believe they don't have enough uh, experience, which is correct. Also, the company is going under. It hasn't been doing well for a while. One of their workers, he suggests that they call up a woman named Shayna Bradford, who specializes in getting companies out of the red and back into being profitable. Um, and they decide to hire her to come along. So they use that as a bit of leverage on what things they plan to do to help the company. And then they take a vote with the shareholders, which ends in a tie with the only person as a tiebreaker being the childhood friend that Caden is not on good terms with. And she decides to do the finishing vote to give the company over to the Grangers. So the Granger brothers are now heads of the company Hooray. I don't know when they'll have time to do their other work, but okay, I guess they're just sacrificing everything to do this now. Again, that was very rude of you to leave all that to us and then die. That's how I feel about it, selfish mother But I'm unreasonable, so. So now that they're the head of the company, they're not gonna uh, contact that Shayna Bradford woman to come in to see, you know, what they need to do to get, you know, back in good standing. To be honest with you, I don't know what her job is. <laughs> they just say, this woman helps companies. What she does is she does some doobity bobbity boobity boo. Uh, she has an interesting mixture of abilities. At some point, she's kind of like an internal spy or in a private investigator, research person. Uh, sometimes she's just like an economist. <laughs> I don't know what she does, but she fixes it. Whatever the problem is, she, that's, she gonna do it. So, okay. She's very good at her job. She's very, uh, you know, revered for it. The only problem is, is that she's hot. And this is a passion flicks movie. So you can't just let the woman be hot. She has to also be in some stupid trite romance with people that she has no chemistry with. What else makes a, what else makes a passion flicks movie? But I, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So they get Miss Bradford, uh, have a lunch meeting with her. This is, of course, the movie's chance to clumsily drop large amounts of expository dialogue. Graduated top of your class at UCLA. Your brother Caden is a musical genius who has quite the following. And your brother Dalton is known in the European circuit as the ladies' man. Immediately, this entire movie is that it's just people talking and doing nothing, and which movie 101. Don't do that, but okay. This is also where they take the opportunity to shoehorn a uh, poorly placed quote unquote sexual tension. I don't wanna say more than any other Passion Flicks movie, but notably uh, upper average of it takes no chance, no time, no effort at all to try to put them really in any situation that would even suggest that these two people are attracted to each other other than just going from zero to sex. And I guess, well, I guess we get it at that point that they might want to bone if they're literally inside each other. <laughs> but, but he suggests that she comes to the office and kind of does her work out of the office because this is a fashion flicks movie. This of course is just gonna give her the, the literal proximity to him in order to again, shoehorn some form of romantic relationship because there is not one. Speaking of uh, shoehorning sexual tension, uh, she comes to the office and she's talking to him and he barely hears her because he's too attracted to her. Um, and then she says, we must discuss something. 
Uh, a matter of your libido and my hormones. That is a quote. That is not me being facetious. That is a quote. That he's incredibly attracted to her and that he is going to be distracted from his work if he does not focus on the job. We are here in a professional setting. Pack up your penis, let me do my job. But yes, all of this is to explicitly create a professional boundary. I am here to work, leave me alone. I see that you're attracted to me. Now again, this is passion flicks. So that was a waste of our time. We didn't even need to do this. But I will say even for passion flicks, they didn't even allow that tension to even sit. Like the, oh, we shouldn't be doing this. They literally pretty much in the next scene with them together, they make out in the elevator. And also, again, it's right after she said, we will not be doing anything. And he just goes and kisses her like the next scene. So it's like, did you listen to the words she said? It's hard to determine what their relationship is as far as like the, the work dynamic. She refers to him as a client. So theoretically she could just drop him as a client at any point, but also he's paying her. So does that make him her boss? I don't know what the power dynamic is there, but regardless of the power dynamic, it's unprofessional. And she said no right before this. So I'm very annoyed. But after they make out in the elevator, she's like, we can never do this again. This must be a purely professional relationship. But Caden's like, you should bring the new girl to uh, have drinks with us at their go-to place after work. He invites her, she says yes. And while there, she's chatting with Caden, the middle brother. Um, and it looks like Jace is a little, you know, jealous of the interaction. Kaden asks if she has a date this weekend and she says yes and they show Jace and he's like rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> that's my man sound. Rrr, 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 free fight, full fight. Again this is supposed to be another moment of grating sexual tension but you could have fooled me. The brothers visit their father in prison for the first time in a very long time, possibly the first time for the youngest ever, because again, he didn't have a great relationship uh, after the trial. They reminisce about the family, about the company, and talk about how the only people that the boys should be able to trust right now is each other, because in the world of business, there are no allies and all that. As if on cue, again, I don't know what her job is, I thought she was like an economist, but she's also like a private investigator or something. But she comes in with information uh, in regards to there being evidence that their trade secrets in the company are being leaked to competitors. Soon after this, it seems as though they've been talking about the business too much, so they have to, again, shoehorn more romance. So after everyone leaves, Jace asks her how long he will be her client, meaning, Presumably, how long must he hold off his obvious attraction to her uh, in the name of propriety? Say you didn't feel anything the last time we kissed. Say we didn't feel anything. I didn't. Which means theoretically we should stop having this conversation. But he was like, well, maybe you'll feel something. <laughs> Why do you ask for my consent if you don't give a I guess some people have role play things and that's none of my business. I was about to say I don't kink shame, but that's a lie. I do. <laughs> I don't believe in the world with no kink shame. And some of y'all are gross. <laughs> that's just how I feel. At the end of the day, people gonna get pissed on because they want to. Nothing I say will stop them. So me saying that's crazy ain't stopping people from doing race play. So I'm gonna say what I gotta say. Y'all not gonna silence me. Can't even say things anymore. Liberal media. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, the in the office. Uh, as far as movie sex goes, I give it like a one out of 10. Real stiff, icy hips, maybe do some mobility exercises. You know that I'm going for the ball. But afterwards she's like, we've crossed the line. I gotta refer you to another firm. Like we can't do this. And he's like, why, why? He's like, no, I need you, no. She's like, I can't do this. Ugh, I'll tell you how I feel on Monday, whatever. But of course, if we've noticed anything about this dude, he doesn't let her do anything without him popping up somewhere in her face, at her place, apparently bars. So he comes to her house after work. If we weren't working together, would you be fighting this thing that uh, is between us as if we as the audience haven't seen the movie so I'm sitting here like sir what are you referring to all I've seen is you explicitly ignoring everything I've said to you and now suddenly you're in my face you say you love me you're in my place and I'm like I'm just trying I'm just trying to make a check sir I'm just trying to make a pinch <laughs> <laughs> and uh she's like well in fairness no if I weren't a professional then I wouldn't be doing this but uh, I am, so we are. I don't want to nullify my 
professional relationship with you. I'm trying to do my job. And he's like, well, why don't we just work like we always work? And then after hours, we can know each other biblically, which, <laughs> which as a side note, there is no distinction between that. But eventually he browbeats her into agreeing to that. And then again, yay, love. Doesn't feel like a consensual relationship to me, but I guess in the world of passion flicks, it's just her fighting the feeling. Don't tell me. God, why do I have a song for every sentence? Just show me. Cause if you say you love me, then you touch me. But it should say so and make it scream out. Don't ever fight the feeling when you feel it. Don't tell me, tell me, show me, show me. If you say you love me, when you touch me, your body should say so, so. Don't ever fight the feeling when you feel it, you already know. But in the world of passion flicks, dick is worth it. Uh, not in my world though. Later in the office, she discovers a bug in a pen on her desk um, that apparently had been recording the room and they were lucky that it was placed that morning and thus had not recorded uh, their illicit affair. But she has a cybersecurity team that starts to look around for who may possibly be bugging this establishment and trying to block it before any more information from the company gets leaked to competitors. And apparently the suspect is someone that works at the company. So it could literally be anybody that works at the company. Now I've been skipping a lot of scenes uh, that I that there's no point of talking about. And I almost considered skipping this one too, but again, if in some way I've unfortunately resulted in a sequel of this movie coming out, I feel like I should lay some foundation here. One of the brothers, the youngest Dalton, ends up meeting Shayna's sister, who is an investigator in her own right. And while she was out staking out a perp or something at a bar with her titties in her throat, good dress girl, that's a good bra, somebody give me recommendations, all right? My titty be leaking out. I have too much titty, for certain bras, but too little titty for others. I'm, I, I should get professionally sized for it, shouldn't I? That would probably help me a lot. But anyway, uh, she ends up meeting Dalton, the youngest brother, and that's the beginning of their kind of rendezvous. She's mysterious. She's like not interested in him and he's a playboy and everyone's interested in him. So I guess that makes him, you know, intrigued by her. Um, and that's all you need to know about that. It was poorly done because everything's poorly done in this movie, uh, but this one particularly so because it was a dub over. Good dress though, you look good. Jason and Shayna go away for the weekend and this is when they finally start to get a bit more vulnerable. He talks about his childhood, his daddy going to jail for killing their mama, but they don't believe that he actually did it. The fallout with Dalton and the family, yada, yada, yada. Being the oldest brother, blah, blah, blah. And then she talks about her past relationship where she found out that her partner that she was seeing for a few months was actually a spy looking for information on her boss because that was one of his biggest competitors or something, I don't know. This is supposedly supposed to be the reason why she has so much hesitation for falling for Jace because, you know, mixing work and pleasure never works out. I hate to break it to you, you didn't need to have that experience to reach that conclusion, but okay. I found it kind of humorous that they gave this as like the reason as if she needed any explanation for why she didn't want to talk to this man considering they in some way have a worker employee relationship. I guess it depends on which direction you're looking at it, whether or not you look at him as the boss or the client. But regardless, they don't care enough to not in the tub with bubble bath. Jesus, what is with like romance movies and putting pussies in compromising situations? Like, I guess it looks good on screen, but every time I see y'all in chlorinated water or bubbles, I'm just sitting there like, oh, she's gonna get out of the bathtub and her shit gonna need an inhaler. Coochie intubation, <laughs> sorry. The next day though, they find out that Freeman, the guy that wanted to be the head of the company, has been a part of the whole infiltration of the company giving information away. And he had been working with Jace's secretary and possibly some some other people to do his dirty work. Shayna ends up finding a secret compartment under Jace's father's couch while she was looking for her panties and ends up finding a compartment that holds evidence that Jace's mother was having an affair with a man named Michael Green to work for their father for years before their father fired him, possibly because of the affair. That took place two months before their mother was killed. The evidence was in a letter from Michael Green's wife to them threatening their mother. Jace is like, well, why didn't he bring this up at trial? That could have made him not go to jail. 
Well, he's like, well, the reason I didn't do it is because A, I didn't want to besmirch my the mother of my child's name, especially when it wouldn't strengthen the case against me. Around this part, the movie is even more expository dialogue. And honestly, my eyes started crossing. So pardon me if this is inaccurate, but I'm pretty sure another reason why he didn't want to do it is because he didn't believe his wife was having an affair. So to besmirch her name just to get him off free and she's not here to defend herself, he didn't want to do. Instead, he thinks that the mother was looking in on some secret dealings or whatever, and whatever she was looking into got her killed. They don't explain why she was looking into secret dealings. We don't know if she was also a spy or an investigator or something. Seems like everybody's job is that in this movie like but it got her killed and he's like don't look into it jace because we don't know what we're dealing with another storyline and i've been skipping up until this point is that jace has an ex-wife a woman who's kind of cartoonishly written out in all the misogynistic tropes you expect of like the bad evil woman in a romance novel she's greedy she's malicious their final falling out was apparently when she aborted their child without telling him even though they're divorced and have no children shared between them she is always coming bumming for money so she comes into the office sees the nude girl they do the whole jealous back and forth boo boo whatever boo 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 she goes to jace asks for him to pay for her a hotel because she's on the run from people that was trying to kill her as i'm saying this i realize this is of no consequence to this movie i probably should have skipped it but again who knows what is important because they never finished the series. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, Shane is pregnant. Not gonna draw that out. I just <laughs> she tells her sister at a restaurant and the ex-wife overhears. She then goes to tell some man that we don't know who was on the other side that she found out that Shayna may be pregnant. Shayna is like, well, what if he doesn't feel the same way? What if he thinks I'm trying to trap him? So apparently she's planning on keeping the pregnancy but she doesn't know how to tell him, but she knows that she must do it. So she invites him to dinner, tells him that she has something to talk to him about. But before she can see him that night, he is knocked out in the parking lot with someone wielding a syringe. He's kidnapped. You wanna guess by who? Cause it's not like we've had any explicit people to consider this far, except maybe the wife that I mentioned three seconds ago. Do you remember who that is? Cause I didn't. It was the dude that was in that one scene that recommended them getting Shayna Bradford to work for them. Shayna Bradford, the woman whose job it is to investigate the business. Shayna Bradford, whose job it is to investigate the business. He said, why don't you bring her in? And mind you, this movie does not ignore that information. They they have him do his old villain arc. Apparently he was working with the ex-wife. That's who she called or whatever. And he was working with other people and yada, yada, yada. Who cares? But essentially he's like, well, the only reason I had you hire Shayna is because I wanted to get on your good side to throw you off. There's no other way to do that. You ain't never taken somebody to brunch. You ain't never bought a watch. Like you, you're an idiot. And this is frustrating. I don't know why it's frustrating me as if any movie from Passion Flicks has ever been well-written, but it's 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 insulting. <laughs> anyway, he has Jace trapped there with some other dude. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I don't know what his significance is. He's been having an affair with his ex-wife. They were probably while they were married at the time too. Oh, and the baby she aborted apparently was his. Also, who cares? Because he's the guy that ex-wife told about Shayna's pregnancy, he's the one to drop the bomb that she's pregnant. I have never seen a movie do such a bad job to build up tension. Um, I could not care less about anything that's happening on screen. Again, you don't understand. This movie's only an hour and 45 minutes. It took me like six hours to get through it because literally paint drying is more interesting to me than anything that was happening on screen. Even in the moments of like tension, where do we go? Where is he? He got kidnapped. Oh my God, where is he? He didn't uh, make them act any different. The music, I don't think was much different. Who gives a f we almost at the end of the movie, so I guess we're supposed to. He then threatens to shoot him, but they're able to get the police there just in time by following clues of his disappearance, the syringe. <laughs> well, actually, no, they were able to find him because he had his uh, find my phone on or something like that. Yeah, no clues to put together, no puzzles. All they did was put on find my phone. They were, and he was busted, so. So they let him go. He tells her that he doesn't mind that she's pregnant and he's he wants to live with her and raise their child. And he says, I love you for the first time. Aye. And essentially that's the end of the movie. Whatever job she did saved the company. So that's point one of two objectives taken off the, off the plate. I guess they're gonna save getting the father out of jail for the next movie that never existed. So I, so I guess he's just gonna stay there. Sorry, my boy. But yeah, that's the gist of the movie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel 
about even making this video. This is kind of a waste of a movie, but I am upset that there were so many storylines set up that I'll never know the end to. Not that I care that much. There was also other story arcs that I didn't touch on at all, including but not limited to the deceased grandfather being in love with his housekeeper, Shayna's father falling in love with a woman at a fruit market, which took up a shocking amount of time, by the way. I just gave you the spark notes for a test that you'll never have. <laughs> but anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you have other bad movies that you think I should watch, you should put those down in the comment section. Check out the things I talked about earlier, uh, the podcast, my skincare set. This beat is beaten. If you're curious about any products I use, that'll be linked down below. And yeah, see you next time.